Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to the corner. Today I've uh, decided to pull an old school build that I've done. I couldn't even tell you how many years ago. I've been over 25 probably. I uh, wanted to build something different and cool. Something kind of modern, something old. And I wanted to do kind of a homage to a friend of mine that runs a hot rod shop out of Belvedere, Illinois. Hopper's Dad Customs. Uh, some people in the automotive world may have heard of him. And uh, just like I said, I wanted to do kind of a homage to him. So I took one of his uh, window decals that he puts on some on all, most all of his builds. And uh, used them to put them on the side of the car here. But I uh, started out with a 1940 Ford sedan delivery. Um... You probably see this in a couple other videos throughout, you know, just kind of all here and there. There's nothing really in depth about it. But uh, like I said, I built this probably, I probably least 25 years or better. Um, started out as a 1944 sedan delivery by AMT. Chopped the top on it, opened the doors up. Back door was already open, but opened up the side doors. Handed them, put the uh, suicide mount style hood, scuba hood on it, the forward flip. Tires and wheels are off of a Plymouth Prowler. The engine is the big block out of the 67 Chevy Impala. I don't know if I can get it up here without dropping it. There's a lot of, quite a bit of detailing in this thing. A lot of it's hidden, but how it goes, I guess. <laughs> it's crammed in there, but it's in there. Uh, door hinges are the hinges like I've done or I've shown in the past. With just the pieces of wire and a piece of plastic tubing for the hinge. Added the speaker. I think this is the speaker out of the Matt and Debbie Hayes T-Bird, if I remember right. I don't know where the seats ever came out of. Purple knobs on a on a turn signal, and tilt steering column release. Little peep mirrors on the outside. That's the window decals that Hopperstad, his name's Kerry too, but Kerry Hopperstad uses on a lot of his uh, finished builds, real cars. In the back, you'll notice Plymouth Prowler taillights. To kind of go with the tire and wheel package. You'll notice the trailer hitch on the back. Painted to match the uh, Plymouth Prowler trailer to it. Now it kind of completes the package, if you will. <laughs> Trailer's not, it's not open, it's just a, I just glued it shut. A little dusty. Paint's, uh, I want to say that's Tester's paint. And then this is their uh, dark purple that they had years ago. This is the same color I painted my 51 Fleet line. Nothing too crazy about trailer. Trailer's box stock. Um, <clears throat> the rear door on this does not open, I don't think. I think I glued that shut. But it's got kind of the, what I call, what they used to call back in the days, the gentleman's shop. It's chopped a little bit more in the front than it is in the back. It gives that roof the, kind of a forward drop or a forward tilt. Years ago they called it gentleman's a gentleman's chop because it always looked like a the old guys back in the 40s when they used to wear the, the, the brimmed hats. They always tipped them down low when they 
nodded to somebody. It was always kind of like that gentlemanly nod to a person to kind of tip your head, head and pull your hat down a little bit. That's kind of how that chop got the, the name. Um, a lot like what I'm going to be doing on my custom on my other 44 that I'm building. This grill, you can kind of see the, the pinholes here and over here, a little piece jutting out. For all of you that know, my son plays drums and plays guitar. The last truck video that I did shows, has, or highlights their, their song that they put together as a band. But, uh, as a piece of guitar string through the, through the front of the grill here, through the hinge area. And when you open it up, it puts just enough bind on it. Guitar string has enough bend and enough bind, you know, to, to bind it to hold itself up. We won't do it now because it's, so I got it tipped up. But painted the lower uh, edge of the headlights to kind of replicate turn signals down in the lower half of the headlights. <clears throat> now the hood will stay up. Well, maybe there. Puts just enough tension on that guitar string to hold the front end where you want it. I can bolt doors open. Now the underside, with it being having the Plymouth, Pro Plymouth Prowler, yeah, tires and wheels on it. <laughs> I put the uh, the chassis is out of the forty Ford sedan delivery. The front and rear suspension are out of the uh, monogram thirty seven Ford. The front end I had a narrow, like I think of an eighth and about an eighth of an inch. I remember having to narrow it, but I don't remember how much for sure. Rear end I think was narrowed. No, I don't think it was. I cut the spindles down to bring the tires in a little bit tighter to the suspension. But I did have the narrow the frame. You can see where I cut it and narrowed the frame, tubbed it out a little bit. Fuel tank is out of the 37 Ford as well. Uh, receiver hitch, I don't know where that ever came from. That probably came out, that might have came out of the prowler. And it has aluminum parts by parks exhaust tips on it. The megaphone style exhaust tips. But, like I said, this thing's probably I don't know, 25 years or better. Built a long time ago. Kind of one of my survivors, if you will. I don't know if you see the interior or not, this side. Long reach shifter in it. E brake down between the seats. Dashboard, I think, is uh, one out of the 40 Ford. Painted out detail by paint a little bit. Detailing skills were pretty good that back then, but not the best. I think they still aren't. But <laughs> Oop, almost dropped it. Steering wheel, steering column. Yep. One thing about these 40 Fords, I don't know if everybody ever, anybody else has the same problem, but the sedan deliveries, you just can't, there's nowhere to glue the body in the back, and this one just never stayed, stayed glued down. I've glued that together, I don't know how many times, and it always pops apart. That's why whenever I pick up a model, even mine or anybody else's, if I ever pick up a model, I always grab it by the tires. At least that way you know you're not going to pick it up and have the car come apart in. <laughs> like that one just did. You just never know, so. Well, heck, while it's apart, I can show you the 
interior, just stock interior. I did cut these back a little bit more. The wheel well openings. I did trim these back a little bit more to fit the wider tubs. These I just moved in and you can kind of see where I cut the frame. <clears throat> then on the bottom, EMT chassis always had that stock exhaust running through the frame. The muffler molded in here and stuff. I've cut these two panels out. I don't know how well there you can see them. You can see where I cut the panels out to replace those two sections where the mufflers are molded into the chassis. <clears throat> Just kind of cleans up the under underside of it. Like I say, this was built quite a few years ago, and uh, stood the time best, better than I have, I think. <laughs> I might try to glue this on there one more time, I'll see if it lasts. But all in all, that's the uh, Hopperstad Custom homage that I did years ago. Rockford Wheels and Scale, I, I used to be the president of Rockford Wheels and Scale for a few years. And as president, I always tried to have one month out of the year just to have a little fun. So I always had, got a hold of Kerry Harperstead and had our meetings out of Harperstead Customs in October and I called it Rocktober, our Rocktober meeting. And then our, we always had customs, rods and customs that month being that we're in a custom, hot, hot rod custom rod shop, hot rod shop. I always thought it'd be kind of cool to have our hot rods in house so that Kerry could see what we did. And likewise, the modelers could see what he did in real life. One year when we were out there, Kerry really took to one of the guy's cars that had a real cool door line on it or in a roof line on it. Yeah, and Kerry Hopperstead liked it so much that he took pictures of the car, the model. And the next year when we came back, he walked over and he says, he asked me who that guy was that had that car that was there last year that he took the pictures of. And I looked around the shop and I pointed him out. He went over and grabbed him and took him over by a car. He says, anything look familiar on this car? Well, here Kerry had taken the, uh, the ideas from the real car and, or the model car and put them into a real car. And the guy was just floored, the modeler was just floored that, you know, Kerry took his ideas and put them into a real car. But we thought that was pretty cool. And likewise, a lot of modelers took Kerry's ideas and put them into scale form. I've still got quite a few pictures from his shop when we are over there. The guy does some nice stuff. But anyway... Well, that's it for this round. Just wanted to pull out the old 40 Ford here and kind of show everybody a little bit. Like I say, I know that you've seen the nose and a few pieces of it in a couple of different videos so far. I just wanted to kind of do a feature on it. So get it done and show you all. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. And uh, we've got one more day left before Monday starts again. So I uh, hope everybody enjoys it. Have fun. Enjoy the weekend and take care and Keep scratching that plastic. We'll see you in the corner.